Hey everybody, Paul from Deutsche Auto Parts. Today we're here at Black Forest Racing again doing episode two of our Project Mark V build. Today we're gonna to be talking about the top end of building our FSI engine. Okay, so again, we're here at uh, Black Forest Racing with Cody. We are gonna be installing the top end parts of the engine today. That includes the cylinder head. We're gonna be going through installing lifters along with getting to installing our manifold, which is uh, much more exciting with the turbo assembly and then timing gear and all the top end parts. So let's go into our install. All right, so we're, now we're gonna be installing head studs on the vehicle. If you're not familiar with what head studs are, they are uh, a stud that normally bolts would go in place here, but they are reusable as well as stronger than standard head bolts would be in this circumstance. We also covered more detail about this in our other video, which was building the bottom end of this engine. If you haven't checked that out, we'll put a link to that where you can check that out. All right, our head studs are installed. We are now going to install our head gasket and all we do is slide that in place and we're ready to put our head on. Okay, so before we get into installing our cylinder head, I wanna talk real briefly about some of the stuff that we've actually done to this cylinder head beforehand. Uh, a machine shop has actually installed valve springs, retainers, as well as upgraded valves. Now, upgraded valves are kind of the more obvious one. Valves, obviously, they are not oversized. They're standard size valves but they are a stronger valve intended for a higher performance operation. Now, the biggest component that I wanted to touch on was the valve springs. They are also upgraded, they're from IE. We'll have links to them in the description below. So, but I wanna talk about why you would upgrade valve springs on a build like this. So, uh, let's just talk briefly about engine operation. So, I have a rod and piston set up here, and basically the way engines work is a piston goes up and down, and while that's happening, the valves are opening and closing. Uh, and so obviously piston goes up, valve starts to shut, and then it goes down and the exhaust and intake valves open obviously uh, at different times. What will happen is at very high RPMs, the factory springs that come on the valves are not strong enough to keep the valves shut because as the engine is operating at really high RPMs, let's say 7,500, 8,000, 8,500, um, when you get to those high RPMs, the valve is not strong enough to keep the valve shutting fast enough at that RPM. So you get what's called valve float. Now what happens with valve float is as, uh, as they're moving very quickly, the engine will come up and because the spring is not shutting quite fast enough, it will end up clipping the piston. And obviously anytime you have that happen where the valve touches the piston, you're almost certainly gonna bend the valve or some other damage. So we upgrade the valve springs on this particular setup so that it can withstand those high RPMs for this big turbo build. Let's get into the rest of our install. All right, now we're gonna drop our head down on top of the studs. A little bit of guidance from our friends. And now we can tighten down our head studs. Now we're gonna install the washers and nuts and we have a little trick to make it a little bit easier. You can use a long screwdriver and just run them along down and drop them in place. All right, so now we're going to be tightening down. This is the correct tightening order as shown by ARP. And we want to start uh, and sequence up to 80 foot pounds for tightening down these head bolts or head studs with nuts. And we're going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, so now we're actually gonna install our lifters into our cylinder head. 
Uh, before we do that, we're actually going to install shims. That, that, that is a small washer here. Now, the purpose of this uh, shim in, in between the cylinder head and the lifter is under high uh, RPMs, what could happen is it could cause the lifter to collapse. So you do so to prevent any issues with that. This will ensure that you're getting closer to a solid lifter setup and uh, make sure the engine can withstand high RPMs. All right, so we have our lifters, and if you take a look here, this is our lifter here, and then this rocker arm pushes down on the valve. This is what opens and closes uh, to keep the engine running. So we have our shims in place, and we're going to drop our lifter in place and then set that on our valve. Now, something to keep in mind, these were all numbered uh, when we took them off, so we're putting them back in the correct order as they're going back in. All right, our cams are actually ready to go in place here. We're now going to use assembly lube to lubricate the journals where the cam's gonna ride. The, this particular cylinder head, the cam journals are actually, or cam bearings are actually built into the cylinder head assembly. So the lower portion of the head and then the upper portion are what make up the cam bearings. So we're gonna lube those and then get ready to install our cams. Now we're gonna install our cam shafts. Now on our particular setup, what we did is already marked the timing chain setup to line up with the camshaft. That way we can easily retime the cams together in time. So we're gonna drop those in place. All right, so now we're going to be installing our cam bridge. You can see it mounts like this. We gotta flip it over so that we can take our flange sealant and put it in place. And what we're gonna be doing is installing it in these channels here. Uh, we have this uh, specific flange sealant. It is anaerobic sealant. And basically what that means is that this sealant would not dry in the presence of air. So this is specifically intended for this. This stuff is super expensive. Um, the factory stuff is around 100 bucks for the tube. This stuff is a little bit better price. So we'll have links to this stuff in the description. All right, so now our sealant is all installed. Well, one note I wanted to make about this. When you flip this over, this is never actually going to dry because as we mentioned earlier, it's anaerobic. Any excess, you're just gonna wipe off because when you have this type of sealant, it's never going to dry in air and the only part that's going to dry is the part that's captured in the actual seal section, which is free from all oxygen. Okay, so now our top end of our engine is all bolted on. The cam cradle is all torqued down. And what we did is we already went ahead and double checked the timing of our engine. We did so uh, because we're not gonna be running the upper or lower covers on this car, mostly for aesthetics because the integrated valve cover uh, is a little bit different and you know, for aesthetics purposes, it wouldn't look so great necessarily with this. Um, we actually mounted our cover in place and We actually mounted our cover in place and then checked with our timing mark there. And then we mounted our lower cover in place. And then we can, we swap our lower pulley on. And then you can see that our timing marks line up there. And then it, once you install this, you can see that it would line up there. So and we're already all uh, timed up and we're ready to install the rest of our timing parts here. Okay, so now we're gonna do a test spin over of our engine just to make sure that everything is timed up properly before we proceed with anything else. All right, so now we're ready to install our integrated valve cover. Okay, so all the bolts, this actually comes as a bare piece of aluminum. Um, we had to add the gasket and then the bolts 
swap over to that as well. So we have all the bolts added to it and we're just gonna drop it now in place. One note, whenever you work with uh, these type of seals, you don't wanna put any type of silicone on top of a gasket that already exists. You just wanna have a clean surface for the gasket to adhere to. Thank you so much for watching episode two of our Mark V GTI Big Turbo Build. On this episode, we got done with our cylinder head and got all of this stuff majorly assembled in this assembly. Next time, we're going to be going through installing the rest of our accessories on the engine, and then we're gonna be proceeding with our trans.